Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I'd like to solve uh, a small problem right now. Um, uh, the problem is about proving an identity of some algebraic uh, expressions. As you know, we're talking about equations in general, and uh, to solve equations you have to basically transform algebraic expression from one form to another. And the skill of transformation is actually very important, and it gives you the possibility to solve equations which you might not even know, like a general solution or a formula uh, about. So, um, actually, this uh, problem illustrates the main purpose of uh, all the lectures which we are trying to arrange here right now, because um, it's not about applying certain things which you know, it's about trying to, uh, to walk the way which you never walked before to come up with certain, uh, maybe a little trick, maybe uh, a little guess, which will allow you to solve something which you think is unsolvable, basically. Um, and, uh, and here it is, basically. Um, let's consider that you would like to solve an equation of a, a really complex type, and uh, I will just put it here. Obviously, if you want to solve this equation, maybe another one, why maybe some number, whatever the number is, so it will be equation uh, for the x uh, to the power of 4, which obviously is very difficult to, to, to solve. However, if you will be able to transform it into a nicer form, which is easily to, to solve, that would be the way. So the question is how to transform one equation into another. So there are a couple of I mean, not a couple, actually, a lot of problems which are dedicated to transformation from one uh, algebraic ex uh, um, expression to uh, another one, which is identical, but it's just different. Uh, and the second form is much easier to solve. So what I would like to do right now, I would like to prove the identity of this expression on the left part of the equation to this. Now, why is it better? Again, let's consider y is a number. Instead of solving uh, uh, an equation that this is equal to 0, you can solve an equation that this is equal to 0. Now, this is equal to 0, it's square, so basically it means that everything inside the parentheses is equal to 0, square or no square. And this is the quadratic equation for x. So basically, to solve this equation of the fourth degree, you can solve the square, uh, the quadratic, quadratic equ equation, and that would be much simpler, obviously. So you reduce the complexity of the problem. All right, so now, again, the problem is to prove this identity. That these two expressions are exactly the same. Now, well, um, I shouldn't say the easy way, but straightforward way of doing this is x plus 4 multiplied by itself four times, x plus y times x plus y times x plus y times x plus y, have a big formula, and then do exactly the same thing. Multiply this um, uh, expression by itself to make it square. And then if you will compare um, left and right uh, sides of this uh, 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 ex expression, you will see that they are identical. So that's something which, again, I would say not the easy, but the straightforward way. Yes, you can do it, but there is no fun in this, believe me. So let's try to do something, uh, maybe a little trick, a little guess. And um, if you never guessed anything about this, you might actually have a problem. I mean, by all means, try to do it yourself. Um, however, if you will solve certain number of equations. In certain cases, you will maybe listen to somebody else who helped you. In certain cases, you will come up with your own solutions. Uh, so basically, you will develop a skill of guessing, so to speak. So um, one of the, um, I don't know, you can call it a trick or, or uh, some kind of approach which you might take. You see, these guys are quite symmetrical. 
and you will see that uh, there are two very important expressions here, x plus y and xy. And, the, and since they are symmetrical, here is uh, something which will definitely help to simplify proving of these two things. And here is what I mean. If I will substitute instead of x and y, I will use different variable. I will use variable u, which is x plus y, and v, which is x times y. I would like to express both sides in terms of u and v. And in terms of u and v, it will be much simpler to prove. All right, well, let's try. On the left, x plus y to the fourth, that's immediately u to the fourth u to the fourth degree. Now, x to the fourth and y to the fourth, well, let, that's too much, actually. However, what we can do is the following. We can have x to the fourth plus 2x squared y squared plus y to the fourth. Now, do you recognize this? Well, it, add, it has x to the fourth and y to the fourth, and we have added this piece, which is expressible in the terms of u and v, obviously. But is this easier? Well, let's think about this. Obviously, this is x squared plus y squared squared, right? x to the fourth times double product times y to the fourth. And this is closer to the expressions which we, which we have, because you can have it, again, inside, we'll do exactly the same trick. We will do plus 2x and minus 2x. So it will be x squared plus 2xy and minus 2xy plus y squared. Square. And this piece, again, you can recognize this is x minus, uh, sorry, not this one. Yes, this and yes, this and this. This is x plus y squared, right? These three members. So this is x plus y square minus xy. And the whole thing square still remains. So, what I would like to say that this expression we have transformed into this, this into this, and this into this. And here we have only x plus y and xy, which are our new variables. So, if I want only x fourth and y fourth, these two guys, I have to use this without this. Plus. So, this is u square minus 2y, 2xy, which is 2b square. This is the whole expression, but this is definitely something which I have added extra and I have to subtract it back now, which is 2 and xy squared is v squared. That's my left part. Well, I think it is easier and you will see why. Now the right part also can be transformed into u and v. How? By adding x, y. So you will have 2 times x squared plus 2xy plus y squared and minus xy squared. Why do they do this? 2xy minus xy, that's 1xy. Because again, this is x plus y squared. So again, I am expressing my, expre my expressing my expression um, uh, in x and y in terms of u and v. So what I can say is 
that this is equal to 2, open parenthesis, u square minus v. That's the right part. So let's write it here. Oh, square, I'm sorry. So I have to prove that this is 2 u square minus v square. So what I did, this is my first step. I have uh, reassign the variables x and v and express them in terms of u and, and, and v and the whole x and y in terms of u and v. And the whole expression in terms of x and y I have transformed into expression over u and v. And quite frankly, this even looks a little simpler because I don't have the uh, something to the fourth uh, uh, degree, which I have to multiply by itself and produce uh, God knows how many uh, members in this huge sum. The most complex thing which I have here is I have two expressions, which are just single by themselves, squared, which is kind of easy thing. Now I can open these parentheses, I can square these two expressions, and what will I have? u to the fourth plus. Well, this is just plain, you know, the difference between two uh, variables squared, so that's square of the first one, which is u to the fourth, minus double that product, which is 4u square v, plus square of the second one, which is plus 4v square, minus 2v square. That's on the left. And on the right, I have to open this square, which is 2u to the fourth minus 2u square v plus v square. Now, is this a true identity? Well, let's check it out. Um, Let's open these parentheses. So 2 times u to the fourth minus 4 and plus 2v squared. All right, let's check it out. u to the fourth, 2u to the fourth. That's fine. Minus 4u square v minus 4u square v. 4v square minus 2, and this is plain 2 again. Checks. So identity is proven in terms of u and v. So basically what, what, what I would like to say is that if I started doing everything in terms of x and y, I would have to multiply x plus y to the fourth degree, which is uh, to the second degree it will be trinomial, and then trinomial by itself, it will be nine members, and this is another trinomial, another nine members, so it will be 18 different um, uh, members in, in, in my expression. And I'm not saying it will be like significantly difficult, but it's really definitely tedious. This is a nice, um, I would say, approach which you can take substitution. Substitute something which you think might simplify in the future your life. And in this particular case, I have just used this particular approach. I substituted this expression. I expressed it in terms of u and v and this one as well. And in terms of u and v, it looks a little simpler to prove. And basically that's it. Now, is it the only way to, to prove this identity? Um, well, absolutely not. I'm sure there are some other ways. I just didn't come up with anything. Uh, but this is just one of the ways. And why is it important? Well, it's... Um, you, you remember... Uh, we, will have, we will have quadratic, expression, quadra, quadra, quadratic um, equations. And in the solving quadratic equations, you will see that sum of two solutions and product of two solutions 
um, play a very important role uh, in the quadratic equations. The product is uh, equal to the um, free member of the uh, quadratic equation, and the sum is equal to the second coefficient with a negative sign. You will <coughs> you will see it in, in further in further lectures uh, on quadra quadratic equations. So sum and product are very oftenly occurring in in algebra in, uh, equations, etc. So if you see so something is really symmetrical relative to sum and product of two members of two, un two unknowns, it might actually very well make sense to consider substitution. Um, certain more complex uh, expressions uh, with something else which is um, expressed in sum and product of two, of two different unknowns. So just one of the approach, remember it, sometimes it might be helpful. And uh, what more, what's more important in this particular case is to realize that even that something is possible to do straightforward, um, in certain cases it might make sense to think about a simpler approach. question is what's the approach and whether you will be able to come up with this approach. Well, it depends. The more problems like this you will solve yourself, uh, the more equipped you will be, even in real life, to find simpler solution for something which straightforward might not be really doable, basically, at all. So, thanks very much for listening to me. Uh, don't forget to check the unisor.com website. There are s m many other um, aspects of uh, mathematics uh, over there, and it might be interesting for you. Thanks.